Hey guys, so this is Justin here, and in this video, I want to show you a really powerful technique that, in my opinion, is incredibly underrated and not used as much as it should be. Um, now, it looks a lot like a moving average. When, a lot, when people see this technique, they immediately assume it's a moving average, but it's not. It's actually so much more powerful. And this technique is known as kernel regression. So, for whatever reason, it hasn't really become mainstream um, in financial technical analysis. Um, I don't know if that's because people don't necessarily know how to use it, at least on the retail side. Um, but I want to show you a way that you can actually use kernel regression in your everyday indicators that you develop in your everyday um, analyses and to use it in a way that's useful. So I, I have seen some people trying to implement kernel regression on other indicators in the platform. But the problem is these implementations they try to do uh, aren't very efficient. A lot of them repaint. Um, and Honestly, that kind of makes them useless. So I want to show you a non-repainting implementation of kernel regression uh, that is incredibly powerful, uh, a powerful tool to have in your arsenal. You know, in a lot of other branches of science um, and, you know, data science and machine learning, kernel regression is an absolutely essential tool to have in your arsenal. I mean, some entire branches of machine learning, like support vector machines, are only possible because of kernels. Uh, so I'm going to hopefully give you a, some intuition as to what kernel regression is in this video. And the way I'm going to do that is by showing you um, how you can actually mimic an exponential moving average exactly using a very simple kernel called the exponential kernel. So I've, I think this is a good learning tool because everyone's familiar with EMAs. I mean, the line that you use to actually plot an EMA is insanely simple. I mean, PineScript makes it so easy. It's just ta.ema, right? And if you look at what's going on under the hood here, like how is that even possible? You can do a moving average in one line because you can't do that in Python. Um, it's actually a pretty cool implementation. I mean, it's a direct implementation where it's just they're directly calculating based off of an alpha coefficient. And essentially, they're scaling that against your source series. And that creates this sort of exponential decay effect. Um, so basically, the farther away you get, the less weighting those points will have. Um, and that's how it's fundamentally different than a simple moving average, for instance. Um, so you can actually do this exact same thing in PineScript using kernel regression. And typically, if you were to try to do this with Python or JavaScript, and um, even if you ask like ChatGPT to try and, and create it, right? What will happen is it will it will actually try to create two for loops, okay? And that's totally not needed. And I think a lot of people um, who are developers who try to implement kernel regression on the platform, they immediately go to this because it's just so like ingrained, especially people who have worked with it before. They immediately assume it has to be two for loops. But in PineScript, the entire runtime is happening in a loop already. So that's actually really nice. You don't necessarily have to create two for loops. You only need one. So you can kind of focus on just like the operative window at any given point in time. And this will be an understood sliding window that happens. So to save time here, I'm just going to um, copy and paste in the formula, but I will take you in line by line as, as to what makes it so powerful. So let's grab this. So this is the exact same exponential moving average, we'll call it, but implemented as a kernel. Um, so in the very beginning, you'll notice that we're establishing these weights. Um, so what are these and why do you need them? Well, these weights kind of make the whole thing possible. So the entire philosophy behind kernel regression is you're basically trying to determine something called the probability density function. And when you think about the word density, you know, you typically think of like an object, right? And you can actually use this as a really good analogy. Imagine you have this like mysterious object that has a lot of different materials in it, right? And you want to know something about this object. You want to know whether or not it will float on water, for instance, or if it will sink. So in order to do that, you need the density. Um, of the entire object. So that includes all of the materials inside the object itself. So imagine if you could send down a little probe to every molecule in that object, and it would give you the uh, weighting of that particular molecule. And then you got it all back, you got all of your probes back at the very end, and you divided them out. That would actually, in theory, give you the average density for this object, and it'll tell you the probability of whether or not it would float or sink in water. That's kind of like exactly what you're doing here, only you're using prices and a kernel function instead of a little probe that you send down. So the kernel function, in this case, it's, it's a very simple one. Uh, it's just this little exponential. 
where this is essentially kind of playing a similar role to what alpha played in the original formula. But what you're going to do with this is you're going to define a loop of a predetermined size. 10 probably isn't enough. I think 100 would be better. That's usually what I've um, seen, at least. And we are going to basically um, go through and multiply our kernel function by the source series, which in this case is just the price. And that gives you, I call it current weight here. I think a better variable name might be current price or weighted price, something like that. Because that's basically what it is. So every single iteration, you're going to take the kernel function, multiply it by the price, and then save the kernel function. And you want to have like this little cumulative weight variable that we initialized up here, um, you know, storing all of your weights. Because remember, in the analogy, we needed to take all of our, um, you know, probes and then divide that out at the end because density is total mass over volume, right? So if we were to try to just, um, you know, at, at the very end of all of this iterations, just return the current weight, that wouldn't make much sense. It would be way up in the stratosphere. Like it would basically be like this blue line, just way, way, way up there and nonsensical price associated with it. So in order to kind of normalize that, smoothen things out, we have to divide it by the total amount of weights that we multiplied against in the first place. So that's why this cumulative weight uh, variable is there. And then from there, it's actually done. Like you've just performed kernel regression 100 times according to this for loop. And what that will do, so I'll just go ahead and plot this. I'll make it white so it pops out and you can separate it from this blue. Um, so let's save this. So you'll see that it already it's very close. Um, and it might be a little confusing as to why it's not exact. But I've noticed um, it, it has to do with the difference between that alpha um, coefficient that you were looking at and the actual kernel function itself. If you were to do the math, you'll notice that it's actually off by a factor of two. And you can kind of see it like the white line has to um, basically be about half the current period in order to match the blue line. So I've done this before. Um, so I happen to know off the top of my head, you just divide the total look back by two. Um, so if we make that 14, perfect. The white line overlaps with the blue. And this is a really powerful thing to realize. Um, like at this point, if you just want to take a step back and um, think about what this means, like you've essentially just jailbroken your moving average because you've accomplished the exact same thing that the built-in TA.EMA can do, but in a way that is so much more powerful and customizable because you can now substitute in entirely different kernels by just modifying a single line. And that's pretty amazing. And you can do some really cool stuff with kernels. You can also combine them with one another. So for example, like imagine if I had a rectangular kernel, that's the same thing as a simple moving average. And if I took the kernel function for an exponential moving average and the kernel function for a simple moving average and multiplied them together, that would give me a new kernel function that I could actually just substitute in right here at line 14. So I'm going to just take this exact exponential kernel and then change this one line here. So you'll notice they're exactly the same. And I'm going to substitute in the Gaussian kernel, which is a very famous kernel um, used for an, an incredible amount of applications. Um, because it's just so prevalent in nature. It's basically a bell curve. So instead of an exponential function, we now have a bell curve function that we're basically doing the regression with. So just by making this one change, you'll notice that this white line will shift ever so slightly, but in a way that's actually favorable. So if I uh, just say Gaussian kernel for this y hat prediction and save that, you'll see that it actually shifted. So just just a little bit, but it's, it's enough sometimes to just catch the, the trend movement a little earlier than it would otherwise. So you can see um, it's actually a bit faster than this blue exponential kernel. And I haven't even changed the period or, or done anything else. This is just purely the kernel. Uh, so it, it's, it's pretty neat because the Gaussian moving average is not very convenient to implement. It's actually pretty challenging. Some people in TradingView have tried it. But this is a way that you can simulate it using a simple Gaussian kernel regression. So that's the general idea behind it. And I've actually made a library called kernel, the kernel functions library, um, which you can see right here. And this actually gives you access to all different types of kernels. Um, so right now I'm, I'm continuously adding to it, but I have the rational quadratic kernel, 
which is honestly, if the Gaussian kernel is like a moving average on steroids, this thing is like a Gaussian kernel on steroids because it's like this infinite sum of, of Gaussian kernels and you can actually affect um, how, how much they contribute to the overall weighting. So this is a really powerful one. I think on my next video, I'm going to focus on this one specifically and how you can kind of use this. It's also the one that I use in my Lorentzian classification indicator. So I think a lot of people do have questions about it. So I'll focus on that in the next video. Um, and there's also these really interesting kernels, the periodic kernel, which is uh, very special because it's good for cycle-based analysis. It tends to move in, in almost a sine wave type of fashion. And this one is an example of how you can combine two kernels, like I was mentioning earlier. The Gaussian kernel multiplied against the periodic kernel gives you this beautiful locally periodic kernel that kind of approximates a seasonality in a recurring fashion. So overall, it's a really fascinating kind of branch of technical analysis that honestly just is not used very much. I really do want to make it more popular in the community, which is why I'm making libraries like this and open sourcing it, because I do think there's a huge amount of potential here. I actually did recently just establish a Discord group where we have a whole section just kind of devoted to kernel regression. And um, already there have been some incredible um, sort of indicators built around this library that really show you um, how easy it is to access this library and immediately start adding value to your indicators um, and, and confluence to your existing systems and moving averages. So hopefully this type of thing is helpful. If you have questions, um, as always, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section. I will do my absolute best to get to them. Uh, same thing uh, on Discord. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me there. So I hope that was helpful and thanks so much.